Yep, we're doing it. You know what that sound means. It means it's time for a brand new edition of the Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiasts, auction sites. My name is John Bolnick, along with my partner, Michael Deeb in San Francisco. I'm in Las Vegas. We are doing this show for you, the nerd herd and the nerd nation. Look, we got stickers, guys. Woo! Yippee Kaye, we're going to be start sending them out. We're going to send them out somehow. One way or the other, we're getting you guys some nerd stickers because you deserve them. You guys have been waiting. We got them. We're going to send them out. It's going to be badass. You guys can put them on your cars, put them on your laptops, put them on your head. I've also got Dirt or Die Porsche podcast stickers. Have, have you guys checked out cool. the Dirt or Die Porsche podcast? Have you guys seen that thing? Check I think almost all of them have. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, a lot of our nerd herd has migrated over to, uh, the dirt or die podcast. We're seeing a lot of comments from both. It's a uh, loyal herd, loyal herd. Loving it. Loving it. Dwayne, Dwayne Wick. You're welcome. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Dwayne Wick. Shout out to Dwayne Wick, man. He drove his car solo, solo, uh, to Luftkult this weekend. I, when I drove, Um, it was, you know, I had another car with me. Rami was in his car. So we, you know, we were in tandem, had a great drive, went straight to your restaurant, the Knob Hill Cafe. If you guys are ever in San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, you want to have the best dinner of your flipping lives. Go check out the Knob Hill Cafe. Um, owned by that guy. No, that guy, that guy over there. Yeah. I'm pointing the right way. Um, yeah, and then on the way back, uh, Mental was driving his Miata behind me, so I always kind of felt like I had a little bit of support. Whereas, uh, you know, Wick, Wick, Wick Drove on the way there, he had some, he had Dale following him in a normal car because Dale's car crapped out uh, before they even got to town. Um, oh, but on the what way, does Dale have that crapped out? Uh, I want to say he has a '73 hot rod of some sort. Um, he had a cooling issue; it was overheating before they even yeah. left Vegas, so he decided, yeah, probably shouldn't risk it. But that was a thing. Uh, Dwayne, when he got to the Airbnb Saturday night after Luftkult, uh-huh. his car would not shift. Like he literally had jacked it up and was under there and readjusted the linkage and everything like that and got it to go yeah. uh, into gear. But he couldn't get it into any gear. And oh, then he crap. got up at five in the morning and drove it home on his own. But he made it. So kudos Good. to Dwayne Wick, my partner at... Uh, the Dirt or Die Porsche podcast, he uh, he was really, he needed to get back on the wagon. Yeah. He yeah, needed yeah. to, because his car, he hit a rock, uh, Luft, uh, I guess, what that was, Luft 8 uh, in L.A. last summer. Yeah, uh, that was a bummer. And it was just a really bummer weekend for him. Um, and so this is a great way for him to get back on the horse. And, and he, he, he actually got great staging. He got released to the east side, which is where the better curation was. Um, he was right down below that submarine, you know, tower um, and had a really pretty cool parking space. Although I will say that Matt Weitzel got the best space of anybody that I knew personally. I think Matt just drove over somewhere and put his car wherever he wanted. Well, he's smart. Yeah. Where, did, he's where was your car? I don't recall seeing your car. If I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, so you know where your car was along uh-huh. the water? Yeah. So I was, but I was. You know, you were kind of to the far end. Mm. I was kind of closer to where the gate that would take you over mm. to the cool side. Okay. So I was big crane. Yeah. from from your from your position. I was just past that big green crane, uh, just like a couple cars past that. Uh, and like your car, you know how they they left a, a empty space because there were those yellow pylons to tie the ropes to for the boat. Mm-hmm. You you had an end space. Yeah. I had an end space just like yours. So that nice. was I. I just don't think anybody took a picture of my car because it was covered in bugs. <laughs> well, it's just not as I, if there were if there were a trophy for dirtiest car in the show, mine yeah. definitely first won, is, would have won first and second yeah. place. Yeah, yeah. Holy cow! Because we drove first, all the way from Vegas second, and then uh, to our Airbnb where there was yep. where it was a dirt road, and then we yep. did your drive all day, and then yep. <laughs> back down the dirt road, and then to the show. Yeah, car yep. was flipping filthy, um, and it was yeah. awesome. I heard somebody, yeah. somebody like I, I was saying something. I was like, um, I don't know, you know, you can't spell dirt without dur. Um, yeah. And uh, and then someone hit me up on Instagram. They heard, yeah, I saw you driving away. Like Luftacult did their own video of people driving out. And it's like yeah. I saw you making fun of that car, and I didn't realize it was yours until I saw you driving it away. I thought you were just like <laughs> giving the guy ish for uh, it being such a dirty car. I was like, no, that's embrace really the funny. dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's really good. 
Did you All notice, right. and we're going to do this at, uh, at Vegas Auto Fest on the 16th of September, uh-huh. but they had a chick hanging out um, where when everyone was driving away. She was uh-huh. cheering for everyone. Every time a, an air-cooled car went by, she's like, Woo! Have a great time! Thanks for coming! <laughs> Your car's awesome! She was like uh, a, a, like a one-person cheerleader squad for the air-cooled cars driving away. I was like, that, that's kind of, that's, that's a neat touch. Way to go, Patrick. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she was just some rando that was doing it, but she had a vest, so I'm pretty sure she was official. Um, All right, everybody, let's get to the actual show. We're screwing around. Michael D., what do we do on this show? What is this? What is the business? What do we do? We we do all the work for you. We scour all of the automotive platforms, all the auction platforms. We go to Cars and Bids, P-Car, Bring a Trailer, Marked, uh, Shiftgate, if they ever sell another car again, Haggerty Marketplace, probably, as they're starting to grow their little classified section and their auction platform. Um, And then we pick the most interesting car that's going to close on that day. And then we review it for you on the show. And then we don't stop there. We actually tell you, we, we play the game with you. We tell you what we think it's going to sell for when that auction closes. And then we hold ourselves accountable Uh, next week. When the, when the cars are all closed, we will uh, cap the episode and we will tell you what our results are and let you know if we think we were, uh, you know, close on the money or on drugs. There you go. Most often we're on drugs. Um, so, yeah, often. that's kind of a recap of what we do on the show. I, I know we got a lot of new subscribers uh, from Luft Colton. Welcome to all of you new members of the Nerd Herd. Uh, we yep. do the show every day. So thank you for being a part of it. And to the old school Nerd Herd, uh, you guys are making it happen. You guys are really getting us close to that 1,000. And uh, we're going to do some cool stuff. Uh, we're going to start doing, a da- not a daily, but a weekly live episode. Um, mm-hmm. as soon as we get to a thousand subscribers. So help us get to a thousand subscribers and let us know what day would be best. What day and what time of day would be the best time to do a live episode? What's, what would make it easiest for you guys to hang out and live chat with us and play along with us? Uh, cause yeah. that would be a lot of fun. That's the way we really want to do it. The way we envision yeah, the show we originally to interact. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, no, that's exactly. I mean, we're in agreement. We, th- that was the way we envisioned the show when we originally thought of the concept was to get the audience to kind of help us with these bids. So, um, that's, uh, that's what you guys are doing by putting your, your, uh, your bids in the comments. So thank you very much. All right. Most interesting car of the day. I have a feeling this video is probably not going to get a ton of views. Um, I really do think this is an interesting car, but we've Good. done one of these before and it got like five views. So I don't know why you right. picked this one, but what the hell it is interesting. Yeah, you know, John, I just partial. I'm really feeling these. Uh, what are they? R one twenty sevens. What what is this platform? R one R one twenty nine platforms. Um, it's a three hundred SL on Bring a Trailer, a nineteen ninety three Mercedes Benz three hundred SL dash twenty four, which means it's got the twenty four valve head, uh, and it's a five speed manual. So this clearly this is a European car. Somebody imported the car in October of twenty twenty one into the United States. The car is offered out of South Miami, Florida, showing on the odometer 78,000 kilometers, which is approximately 48,000 miles. So it's low mileage, and it looks to be in very nice condition, attractive in the silver paint with a light gray lower cladding that is not um, uh, not the same as the bodywork. If you look really closely, uh, it's it's got two different tones to the silver. And then interestingly, it's got uh, almost entirely uh, like dark red, interior uh low miles manual transmission the special head this is just a really cool car now most of the sls that we have in our country there were some 300 sls but a lot of them were uh uh, almost all of them were automatic we did sell a few manuals but i don't know that we ever sold a manual with the 24 valve head in this country which is why i picked this car and when you look at sls a ton of them are V8s, and the V8s make uh, like 300 horsepower and almost 350 pound Ford of torque. So it's like, I should say, 320, 325 in the horsepower and 340, 345 in the torque. This car makes 230 horsepower and has 200 pounds foot of torque, which ain't shabby. Now, the cars are a little bit heavy. Um, they come with a convertible top, and then you can add, uh, this car comes with the uh, hard top. You could hoist that in your garage and put it on in the winter if you lived in Seattle. Um, or if you're JP, you can put it in storage and just drive it around as a convertible for the rest of eternity. But um, I just thought this one was really neat with that uh you know that special four valve head making a few more horsepower having low miles it's an interesting colorway and i love that it's a stick john 
this is a car I would like to own, and I don't think it's going to cost a lot of money. So I'm going to the well one more time to see if anybody's going to follow us down that path and, and agree with me that this is a car that they would like to drive. It, it Look, it's still not a sports car. This is just a grand touring car, but it's a nice one, and it's probably fun to drive even if it's going to leave you wanting as far as power and uh, handling performance. Although these cars do handle pretty well. Um, and I've never driven one of these. Maybe they feel a little bit lighter without that big lump up front. But uh, I'm going to keep covering one until I think I buy one, JP. So I send it back to you. Any more love for the manual with the 24-valve head? Does 230 horsepower sound like it'd be enough to get the job done? I'm sure this car weighs a ton or almost two tons. I'd sure love to give it a shot. I've never driven a manual, and I've driven the automatic six cylinder 300 sl yeah and it is a pig it is just an absolute worthless piece of garbage these first gen uh 129s with the six cylinder and the automatic are just they're pretty much undrivable i mean they they're right. so heavy and that slushy slush i mean it's just an awful transmission it's just not a car you want um this configuration i didn't even know they had a 24 valve version of it um with a manual i'm i'm really intrigued and i i would love to get a go behind the wheel of one of these me too um and yeah i i wouldn't have super high expectations of it being fast or anything like that um but i've driven you know like a 300 it's weird because like a 300 uh what is the, the 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 sedan the 300 sedan uh, like an e. e yeah e yeah. 300 and the I C owned it, yeah. yeah I owned an E320 and absolutely that's one of the my favorite cars I've ever driven uh-huh. it was just such a just a lovely drive and and the yeah. E or the uh, SL320s in the 129s were actually pretty okay um they drove yeah. a lot better that the, the just slightly bigger engine just made all the difference and I don't know what it was um but in this configuration just or at least in the the American configuration with the six cylinder and the automatic, terrible. This configuration with a five speed and the, and the 24 valve, oh man, I want to try it so bad. And I absolutely <laughs> would own one of these and drive it. This would be just the greatest daily driver. The other thing too is that the maintenance cost on these old bins just isn't that much. Yeah, parts right. are going to be a little bit more expensive and stuff like that, but there's just a million of these engines around. And you get someone like German Motors in town or whatever that just know these old Mercedes. They could easily, this has got to be a, 300,000 mile powertrain. It's just going to go oh, and go and easily, go and go and go. Easily. Yeah. yeah. What's interesting too, and I, I suspected this as you were talking about driving, um, I just looked it up and I found a photo in the bucket. The red line on this car begins at 7,000 RPM. Imagine that, wow. a six, six cylinder, an inline six Mercedes Benz with a manual transmission and a 7,000 RPM red line. That's, by the way, that's higher than my 16 valve. <laughs> wow. Isn't that crazy? That is nuts. Um, yeah. So did it say where this car was before it was imported into Florida? Uh, Germany. This car was born in Germany, so I believe it was imported from Germany. It, it could have bounced around Europe, but I think this is a German domestic market car. Um, and it just, I mean, JP, as you're looking at it, do you see anything that I don't? This looks like a really clean example, even yeah. with miles. Clean dash, no bolster wear on the seats. Um, the body yeah. looks in great shape. I love the color. I love the the red and the and the yeah. silver. Would have been cool if it had a black dash and a black steering wheel, but whatever. I'm not going to be that picky. Um, yeah, the top would never be on this car. <laughs> if no. I, well, I, I take that back no, no. because here in Las Vegas, it's hot, and it would be a great car summer. to throw some air conditioning, you know, turn the air conditioning on. The air conditioning probably works on this thing. Oh, absolutely. It probably works great. And you put the hard top on, and it's, uh, yeah, this is the perfect daily driver here in Las Vegas. Have some choice. I, I think this would be a cool car for you, actually, Michael D. I, and, I want this car. I yeah. absolutely want this car. My, my wife would love it. Holy God, would she yeah. love it. There in uh, San Francisco, it's not going to be so expensive. <laughs> You'd be worried about it. Just leave the top off. Who cares? Nobody's going to break into it. No one's going to steal it. It's just uh, because as a five speed, nobody's going to. The, the people that steal cars in the Bay, they don't know how yeah, to drive Yeah, we know how to drive it. <laughs> yeah, so they'd be like, mm, crap, what am I going to do with this thing? All right, so what do we think this weirdo is going to bring? We've seen, the last time we we looked at one of these, I was way over on the bid. I thought it would bring a bunch of money, and it didn't even come close. And that was, But that was the regular, the not 24 valve. So what what's going to happen with this one, dude? Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can see our old bids, and I'm not finding it, so I'll just jump back to where we were. So, JP, our car closes in a couple of days, and it's sitting at just, five thousand dollars like 
fifty two hundred bucks or something on four bids. Um, I played this one a little bit conservative because the last ones didn't do that good, um, and the last one was a domestic market car. I do think that there's a bit of a scarlet letter um, that in gray market import cars have to bear that it wasn't. Uh, standard to this country, uh, I don't think somebody's going to pay a premium for it for that. Now, again, I could be wrong, and maybe I don't understand what the cool Mercedes guys do about the 24 valve head, and maybe they do, but I'm going pretty conservative here, and I'm going to give you $18,000 to buy this 50,000 mile manual 24 valve head 300 SL. What do you think, JP? Am I am I out of my mind? That's you said a, I was too high on the Targa. Are you going to tell me I'm too low on the on the SL? Oh, man, I I, I want to think that this is a twenty five thousand dollar car, but I mean, with only three days to go and it's only at five grand, um, barely yeah. six thousand dollars. So you know, at eighteen thousand dollars, you're talking about you know three um, uh, x what it's at now in just three days. Will it will it triple in price in three days, or will it be even more? Um, geez, that, that is a very good bid because the question is whether will it be above or below that? Um, cause I think it's, there's no way it's going to get much more than 20. Um, but will it just stall out at like 15 or yeah. something like that? Well, let me, let me yeah. interrupt you for a quick second, JP, because I found yeah. it. Okay. So, uh, we looked at a 1991 300 SL on cars and bids and, um, that car also had a manual and I'm just pulling it up, JP. Please bear with me one second. So the car had 141,000 miles, um, and it was in Newport Beach, and it was a really pretty color car. So I said $18,000 on that car. You said 20, and the car sold for $13,000 on 23 bids. Now it was on cars and bids, and it had 140,000 miles on it. This car is a gray market car, has less miles. It's on BAT. So I'm starting to feel like I might be on thin ice on my 18 grand. But like you said, uh, so far, it's not showing like it's going to have the legs to get to that over $20,000 threshold. But if that information helps you with you make your bid, there it is. Take it away. Yeah, it does. Better platform, better car, better configuration. That helps me because I was like, boy, do I go slightly over, slightly under. If you recall at the time, too, we were also talking about comparing it like the day before we had talked about uh, an SLK AMG or something yes, like that. Just yes, some yeah. just pig of an ugly, stupid you know, car. <laughs> you know, let's face right. it, they're good cars, but they're just not anything anybody really wants. It's, it's yeah. not going to get any eyeball. Um, <laughs> it's, it's too new for it to be a classic, and it's too old for it to be a contemporary car. Those are just garbage. Who yeah. would buy that? Or, you know, like you, who would buy an SLK over this? No, any no, SLK no. that exists, even a brand spanking new one, they're garbage. They're just like, they're just not cool in any way this car just oozes cool and oozes class plus with the manual geez yeah so I'll that's go... 7000 rpm makes me want to drive this car so bad oh, i bet you this so car bad. actually drives pretty cool yeah. Yeah. yeah it's heavy but i bet it drives cool so what was my bid last time 20 21 you said 20 yeah 20 i'll go 20 i'll, I'll take the over right. on this one for sure because this this car really is fantastic what do yeah. you guys think of this little uh, r129 is this going to bring some big money are we going to get surprised it's going to go 30 I, would you be shocked if it were for 30 35 no deep? not no, at all not at all not yeah, at i mean this car it, really is that cool like like jp the, you know as a 93 they've only been eligible on the 25 year importation for a handful of years mm. I, I i'd be willing to bet that this there's probably less than a dozen of these things in the United States with the 24 valve head and a manual transmission. This is, I mean, this is super unicorny in, in our country. And again, they're probably very common overseas all throughout Europe. Uh, the six cylinders would have been sold in droves over 500s because they would have been uh, less money for gas and easier to insure. Um, but in our country, nobody would have wanted too. one. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. Yeah. The tax as well. So, um, so they're way more affordable and fun. But in our country, I bet you this is a total unicorn. So if somebody pays 36000 for this car or thirty grand, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. <sighs> boy, we will see. What do you think the reserve on this thing is? That's the oh, big, man. yeah, boy. Yeah, what that's would, a good question. What would question. BAT give, you some, give someone for a reserve? All right, guys, uh, now's the time to play along. Plug in your bid. See if you're better at this than we are, and we will find out what the results of this 93 300SL 24 valve, three pedal, five speed car goes for right now. After this. Hey guys, I gotta tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've gotta call our friend Steve at God and 
save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the options like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. God and Porsche of Las Vegas. I talk about Luft Cold a lot. We had Patrick Long on the show a couple episodes ago. I like to find, you know, beef everywhere we can. It's just kind of like an old Wendy's commercial. Um, and uh, there's some there's some ish going on right now because mm-hmm. every time Luft Cold comes up, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the, the film festivals. What is it? Uh, yeah, Sundance, Somewhat in Park like City. Sundance, 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 and you got Dance, Slam Dance, and, and all yeah, the other ones. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, Luft Cult's kind of cultivated all yeah. these other events that happen around it, and then you get all these different bodies that are like, there, there's all this political posturing. Everyone trying to like, oh, you come to our event, or no, you come to our event, and you know. So this year, it's no different being in San Francisco, and we are back from the future to the future. Are we from the? No, we're from the past. We're in the future now. We just what? jumped ahead. You guys just. <laughs> Watched a couple of commercials from our friends at Godden, and uh, you learned about our dirt or die Porsche podcast that we do a couple times. I don't know, we do it like once a week or something like that. Sometimes it's two. Uh, we're not super consistent over there, like we are here at the Pit Nerds, where we have your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the auction sites. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, next week, um, as it's kind of, we always say next week because it's, it's weird how we record these, uh, but mm-hmm. our next batch. Uh, we'll probably have our good friend Lucky, Lucky Lopez from the Lucky Lopez YouTube channel is going to be joining us next week. Uh, Damn. Check out his channel. He's kind of a big deal, as the kids yeah. like to say. Uh, so that'll be nice to have his expertise. He's one of those guys that he's like a super car dealer. Like he just knows the car dealership industry. He knows all about financing and he knows all about what the banks are doing and what's going on with inventory and what's going on with all the different manufacturers. He, you know, if you are ever like, if if you're thinking, yeah, you know what, I'm going to go get a new car or I'm going to go shop for a car at an actual normal car dealership. You know, and let's face it, most car dealerships aren't cool like God and Classic. You go into something like God and Classic, (laughs) and it's a completely different experience than 99.9% of car dealerships. Um, So true. And and, uh, yeah, that's kind of Lucky's shtick, man. He will help you navigate that world. There's a bunch of these guys. I don't know if it seems like... It seems like if you're in this space, if you're watching Bid Nerds, um, you're probably getting all kinds of car automotive related stuff in your feed the algorithm has a really hard time understanding what it is what the hell it is that we are uh (laughs) you know because we're not car reviews but we're not telling you how to shop for cars at normal car dealerships yeah have you noticed eve that all these different um youtube channels for car shopping are just overwhelmingly like the sky is falling. I thought I was a negative Nelly, <laughs> you know? Um, sorry guys. I thought I had this on uh, something, but yeah, I mean, there are just what, so many that are just like, Oh, it's, it's the end of the world. Yeah. Big trouble. There's one. Uh, what is it? The Ray and Zach show. Oh, um, automate. Yeah. It's just, the, they're just constantly everything. The Ray and Zach, uh, <laughs> They've got like, you know, 100,000 subscribers and it's just like everything is done. Stop wasting your money, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's um, I am pretty bearish in general, (laughs) but uh, I don't think things are quite as bad as some of these guys. I don't know. We'll get we'll we'll get lucky on here and he can talk about it. Uh, Send us uh, send us your social security numbers and lucky will get you bought. That's right. That's right. (laughs) You know, he had an episode. He had an episode. His most recent episode at the time of this recording is about all the people that have cars uh, and are like you, you lease a car. You go out and lease a, I don't know, a Kia Telluride or something like that. Or I don't know the name uh-huh. of these you know, yeah. SUVs from Korea. But there's all these people that are touring and, uh, you know, doing the, the Ubers and the <laughs> Uber Eats yeah. and stuff like that. And they're getting their leases revoked. Like, yeah, it's you're renting the car. It's illegal. The you the finance companies have, are bopping them. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a that's a it's a, it's a federal law. It's not a state law. It's a federal law, and it's illegal. Um, if you rent your car, uh, you're supposed to have a brandished title that say that the the car that you bought is a previous rental. Mm. The one that I don't understand 
Um, and this is not an indictment of any particular Porsche dealer, but Porsche has a, a program where um, the dealers buy a certain amount of like basic cars that they use as loaner cars um, in their like loaner car program oh, I know that is, oh, that's okay. underwritten by that's or, or underwritten by Porsche Cars North America. So theoretically, you could go into a Porsche dealer and look at a brand new model that is maybe three months old and has anywhere from 500 to 5,000 miles on that car. Those cars are supposed to come out of that loaner program after six months. But while those cars are in the program, those cars are eligible to be sold as brand new cars. The only caveat is that the warranty started on the day that the dealership punched the car. In other words, they put the car into service and then thus the warranty started. Um, but but Porsche Cars North America or Porsche Financial underwrites those cars a little bit. The dealer gets a little bit of incentive money back on the cars. And uh, and so they can sell you a new car at a small but significant discount. Um, the only thing is that your warranty might be six weeks to six months old, and a car might have a few miles on it. But otherwise, you get a new car at a discount. Uh, but, you know, three or four or 40 people might have driven that car before you took delivery of it. I don't understand why those cars don't have a brandish title because they were – they were used by the public. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just kind of weird. Um, it's it's like the way Porsche looks at it is, well, they're in the club. They they were lent the car because their car was in service, which means they're already a Porsche owner. And Porsche is just trying to get them to test drive a brand new car for an extended period of time. And it's all on board. Therefore, it's not a rental. But it is a rental. Like, mm. why aren't those brandish titles? I never, Nobody could ever explain that one to me um, for the handful of years I was with the brand. Uh, but that's a, that's a program that exists. And we are way off topic. I apologize. That's all right. I don't know. I just <laughs> I don't understand how, how if you finance a company through a bank or you finance a car through the bank, you know, you're yeah. basically owning it, right? It's your car. Mm. Uh, I get, the Turo thing, maybe, okay, I can understand, like, Saying, well, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Oh. Let me let me stop you. When you finance the car through the bank, in the eyes of the court, the bank owns the car and they're lending it to you. They didn't lend it to you to rent it out to make money. Now, mm -hmm. You should be able to just say, hey, I like you should be able to check a box and say, I'm going to rent it out to the public. Maybe they bump you a point on your finance thing, but you should be able to do it legally lord knows congress does all this so why can't we do it you know what i mean yeah. but but let's not get it wrong you don't own the car if you didn't pay for it the bank owns the car and that's yeah. that's how the that's how the law sees it sorry to well what about what about um and and again i i don't i think that's a little screwy but <laughs> renting the car out on turo that is not necessarily within the spirit of the loan i totally understand that but if yeah. you buy like a truck or an SUV or something like that and want to Uber with it or Uber Eats or deliveries and yeah. stuff like that, why can't you do that? That because that's you're not giving the car to someone else. Um, right. You know, I understand that the bank doesn't want the the bank assumes they're going to give you the loan and you're not going to drive it a gajillion miles. But you know, I, I've never seen a loan that's had a mileage stipulation. Have you? No, no, you know? no. So the, why, no, you know, the, the, I mean. It all comes down to this is the, especially in California, it all comes down to assumed risk, right? Yeah. So the bank is lending you the money, the, the car for either uh, if it's your daily driver, it's personal use to either get you to, to work and back or to school and back. Um, and then if it's a if it's a Sunday car, then there's a very limited amount of miles on your secondary car that you're going to take out on weekends in fair weather. Um, but when you start using the car like commercially, either to lend it out or to Uber and deliver something or whatever, then theoretically there's a greater risk to the bank's investment. And so sure. maybe you should just have higher insurance, uh, especially if you're leasing. You know, you're gonna theoretically you're gonna put a lot more wear and tear on the car. Well, a lease has a mileage. Uh, a lease yeah. would have a mileage restriction, which would. Right. Like turrowing or anything like that seemed pretty prohibitive. Um, right. Yeah, and and that's not even the talk about the insurance thing. There are the insurance companies are revoking insurance on people that are doing this kind of stuff too. So that's a whole other right. conversation. But check out Lucky Lopez's video on that. Pretty interesting. All right, what happened yeah. with this SL? Was it was it SL five hundred? SL three hundred? I can't remember. 
Yeah, this is the European 1993 Mercedes-Benz right. 300 SL-24. It's got the 24-valve head, and of course, the reason why it's so fascinating, that five-speed manual. The car is, uh, I believe, titled and sold out of South Miami, Florida, and was showing 78,000 kilometers, which is under 50,000 miles. JP, I know you remember, but I will remind you uh, that I bid $18,000 on this car, and you took the over at 20, and Dang, damn it. JP, you missed a Yahtzee by $325. Our car failed to sell at $20,325. You were right on the money with your bid, but the car didn't sell on 26 bids there. So I, I almost bid, you know, 30 or 20,300 just to be clever, which means I would have been like 20 something bucks off of a Yeah, 25 yeah. bucks. That would have been really frustrating. Yeah. We would might have seen you cry on the show, which would sure. have been, you know, I would have felt terrible after I stopped laughing. But, John, the question begs then was what were, what did BAT allow the reserve to be set at that $20,000 didn't get it done? SLs are so effing soft in the marketplace. They are – I actually think they are one of the greatest values that you can pick up right now. Um, I think this era for Mercedes is a dynamite era. I think it was sort of the last of the, of the like – really good build quality of cars before Mike Jackson took over of uh, Mercedes-Benz North America and, and all those cars going into the, the 21st century were start the, the you remember that famous article, the star is tarnished or the luster is off the star. Mm-hmm. Um, this was sort of the last great era and SLs are inexplicably soft. I, I get that there are a ton of them in the marketplace, but by and large, most people that buy a Mercedes Benz as a secondary car have disposable income, and a lot of them, like the majority of them, are pretty well taken care of. I thought that this car should be worth a lot more, but I didn't think BAT would allow a, a, a reserve that was, in this case, easily over twenty-two thousand, twenty-five thousand dollars. That's surprising to me. I thought at twenty grand, your number, this car would have sold, and it didn't. So really quickly because i know we're long here what do you think that the reserve was set on this car what do you think they were looking for Thirty thousand bucks maybe yeah i mean with that kind of it has pretty low miles too so i mean yeah um but not crazy low miles i mean it's in kilometers so whatever i under fifty thousand miles miles, yeah i look the, the problem is sls with sls in general um is they're not great i mean they're just not sports cars, right? They're no. great driver's cars. They're fantastic as something to get in and cruise. Um, yeah. But even with a manual on something like this, this isn't going to be something you're really going to want to go tear up the canyons in. Um, no. They're just too heavy. Um, they're built like an old Mercedes, which is fantastic if you need to eat up some miles on the freeway. Um, but I, but when, if you think about what people have in their garage and – you know, and you I know you're the same, you know, you have an SUV as your kind of family thing. You got a Cayenne right. or a Macan or, yep. or something, right. Or a Range Rover. How many people have a Range Rover Sport or something and a 911? Yeah. Um, you get your daily driver and then you get a sports car, something that is a sports car, um, which means a 911 or a 350 Z or a something, right. Something that can actually go around a corner. Um, you know, whereas this car becomes kind of like a third tier enthusiast car. You, cause it, it's the third thing you get. <laughs> because yeah. you're like, all right, I've got the car that tears up corners. I also want something to drop top and, uh, you know, have my lady uh, and just cruise the boulevard in. Um, yeah. And so it's kind of like double dipping because a lot of times your sports car takes that as well. Um, and then if you just want to daily drive something and cruise and be comfortable, you're going to be in your modern car. I mean, hell, uh, you know, a, a Telluride or something like that is going to be a more comfortable daily driver than something like this. Kinda. Um, people aren't gonna. I, I actually would love to daily drive a car like this, um, and I kind of do. Uh, but it's it, C4, most people don't C4 want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So most people don't want to row their gears on their daily driver. Uh, most people want something that they can really kind of check out, even like a Tesla, and yeah. like you said earlier on another episode. You just get in the car and let it drive them somewhere. Um, yeah. So if you want a little bit more of an analog experience and, and look really cool and have a daily driver, that's what this is for. But that's a much smaller market than people that want a sports car for sports car stuff. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I think I think that's always going to challenge the SLs. And that's all the generations. That's the, even the you know current ones like, uh, you know, the the. 
the 2003, I would love like to find like a 2005 SL 55. Uh, cause that yeah. thing is a muscle car. Um, and it fits in muscle car <laughs> class, but it doesn't still doesn't really handle all that great. Um, uh, handles no. pretty well, but not great. But it's, it's still beast. not a sports yeah, car, but it's a beast, so you can rip yeah. the tires off yeah. and, and do that kind of stuff. Whereas again, this old 129 doesn't do that. They're not that fast and they're definitely not yeah. muscle cars. So I don't know. I think that's why, uh, I think that's why the values of these will always <laughs> just kind of not ever really super take off. What's the run you guys do uh, along the lake to go to breakfast and come back? Overton, yeah. Overton. Yeah, lake Mead run. I, this, this, yeah. this, this car, maybe not this one, but an SL5, uh, yeah. an SL500 or an SL55, yeah. you would get to Overton and have to refill the gas tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Those you, You're talking about 100-mile-an-hour corners where you just, you know, dive yeah. into it with something like a, an SL55 with modern ABC, you know, suspension. Yeah. That's what that yeah, suspension's built for is to oh, go totally. 100 miles an hour around a freeway, you know, 55 mile an hour freeway corner um, where, you know, if you've got tight, you know, lock to lock first gear, second gear type stuff, this is not what you want to be in. Um, especially with, you know, this is, even though this one you can row through your gears, I can't imagine first gear is all that great. You had the, you had the the 190 E. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same gearbox. Cosworth with gearbox. Yeah. First and second gear. How was it? They were great. They was were it? fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that transmission is fantastic. And it's the same box that's in this car for sure. Um, the get drag dog leg five speed. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a very sporty gearbox, super easy to shift and uh, real positive engagement. And the gears are spaced really nice. I imagine this car is probably pretty fun to drive. I'll remind everybody this car, the red line is at 7,000 RPM. Uh, I bet this thing gets out of its own way. Yeah. Know? And this one has a 24 valve too. That's so, uh, you know, yeah. keep kind of kind of glossing over that part, which is, you know, so, but, but this car is also what twice as heavy as your 190. I mean, these things oh, are Oh, for heavy. sure. Yeah, yeah. This would not be a nimble car. Uh, but as a grand tour, it'd be a really fun car to drive. Figure out a way to put some KWB uh, coilovers I, on there and go for the, it. The, the hot setup, if you had, let's say, Rami's, if you had access to Rami's bank account to spend money on this car, uh, the hot setup would be to take the inline six out of a C36 with 285 horsepower and 300 pound foot of torque and put it in this car with the same gearbox with that manual turn. Now you've got a car that can get out of its own way. That'd be a lot of fun. That'd be a lot of fun. And that's, that'd be crazy that's to Jason, do on the 24 valve. Jay, I mean, yeah. Jason, Jason Kamisa's idea. He had one of these cars and he thought I'm either going to sell my car or put a C36 uh, motor in it. And he wound up selling the car. And I always wished he had done the motor cause I wanted to drive it. <laughs> I love bad ideas. All right. Hit the subscribe, like, notification button. Share this video on a group. We wind up getting a lot of fans when that happens. The Nerd Herd is doing the deed. Uh, look at this, Steve. Hold on. Dirty Wait, deeds. I got Dun -dun. stickers for <gasps> days, and we're going to be coming oh, out soon. So, uh, all in, right, guys. In, in this vicinity, I have bookshelves and shoeboxes and some drawers. Get those nerds!